You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone and the day is near. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to uh, commit a homiletical sin here potentially in a minute, and it's not as interesting as you think, but what I'm going to do is describe an experience that I've had that I actually have no way of really knowing if you have had it. I'm just guessing that you've had the same experience, and um, if you haven't, you can check back in at minute five of this sermon. So in this, in the mornings, in fact, it's become much more common the older I get, and actually, since we just changed the clocks, it's been really common. I have this experience I don't really like, which is that I wake up before my alarm clock. And when I wake up before my alarm clock, I feel as though I'm being robbed of some of the sleep that I could have. So, but I'm there and I'm awake. And it's one of these things, when you wake up in the night, you kind of take assessment of your surroundings. And one of the things I do is I just kind of take note of the quality of the light that is in my bedroom right now. Because you know, if you wake up, and it's not your alarm clock waking you up, If you wake up and it's completely dark, you're like, well, this is nowhere time to get up now. I can try to put myself back to sleep. But there is that more sinking feeling that you wake up and the quality of the light says to you that the sun is just about to crest across the horizon and your alarm's going to go off in 10 minutes anyway. And it doesn't matter that I've been robbed of those 10 minutes. I still feel kind of, I just feel like I should have got more sleep. But I'm sitting there in the, in, In that early pre-dawn light, I know that the day is about to get there. And I don't just feel as though I'm being robbed of sleep. There are several things that happen to me, and I'm guessing they happen to you too. But once again, like I said, I'm making some assumptions here that I can't be certain of. But when that happens to me, I have one question that initially hits my brain. Once I've decided that I can tell that the quality of the light is the light where the sun is about to shine into my bedroom... And the first question is always, do I stay in bed or do I just get up and start my day a little bit earlier? And that question can fight back and forth, but part of the argument that's going on is, well, if I get up, what am I going to do with that time? Do I get ahead on some chore I've got? Do I take it and just go sit and have some peace and quiet before the day, you know, pounces upon me? And then the other part of me is fighting back saying, well, if you got 10 more minutes of sleep, maybe if you changed your alarm, you could get 30 more minutes of sleep and you would, uh, you'd feel even better about the day. But other things start to happen too, because often if you've woken in that early morning light, there's often stuff on your mind. And maybe you never really slept that hard all evening. And when you finally, the time that your eyes open this time, though they've been opening all night in the dark, when they open in that pre-dawn light, that kind of anti-dusk that we have, you are glad that this long, long night, in which you've not gotten very much sleep, is about to be over. And you might sit then and actually might finally fall back to sleep. The reason I've been thinking about this experience in this past week is because this is the image of our faith that Paul paints for the Christians who are in Rome at the very end of his letter. He says that living as a follower of Jesus is like living at that moment where the sun has not yet come up and you are still in bed. He says to them, it doesn't feel that way, but it is getting less dark outside. And when it's getting less dark outside, you've got two choices. You can either get up and get out of bed, or you can stay there. Now, it has always been interesting to me that the end of this very long letter that Paul writes, that this is the picture of the life of faith that he gives them, because he has just assailed them in 12 plus chapters about 
how great and mighty the love of God is. If you know these phrases, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Or if you've heard the phrase, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Or if you've heard the phrase that in Adam all became sinful, but in Christ all became alive. And as if all died in the first Adam and the second Adam made alive. That's all stuff that he has told them. In grand and magnificent terms, he has painted for them a picture of their faith that should give them nothing but hope. But here, he tells them that he recognizes that even in the midst of all of that knowledge they have and all of those things they've come to believe in Jesus, that he has done great things for them so that the work of Christ has made it so no one can be separated from the love of God forever. They still feel as though they're living in the night. And he tells them, you are. But... It's not the deepness of night. It is that part of night where night is about to be over forever. And if night's about to be over forever, if that is kind of the picture of the Christian faith, I think that is the picture that we can hold up in our season of Advent this year. We have the different seasons of the church year to emphasize different realities that we experience in our own walks of faith. When we have Advent, that experience is the one where we're waiting for the sun to come up and the night has been very long. Or it's the one of where we have been asleep and we have not been paying attention and the sun is about to come up and expose those things that have happened in the darkness. Advent is like being in your bed, waking up and deciding what to do before the sun will come up. Well, if that is the way that Advent, or if that's the, that's the reality of our Christian life, that Advent is for, or forces us to to examine and to participate in and to walk in, Paul also gives us the way that he hopes we will act in that moment. When he says, let us then, then being because the sun is coming up, lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light that he is going to tell them now that there is a way to live and we are going to live as though we believe that the sun is coming up because there's another way to live where you think that the sun is going down when that light is that same quality because it's really hard to tell in the world when you're out in the evening, if you had no watch on your wrist, whether the sun had just gone down and it was dusky or if the sun had just is about to come up in its same kind of duskiness. But he says, we are to live as though we are at the moment when the sun is going to come up and everything that happens in the dark, we are to put away. Another way to say that is the way my mother used to say it, which is nothing good ever happens after midnight when you're out. He is saying that there is a way that we live when things are covered in darkness and we feel that we are alone. We are to live that way no longer. We are to live as though we are exposed in the light of God. And you are put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. You're to put off those old ways of being, the ways that led to places of despair and shame and disgrace. And then he uses the same language again in parallel with putting on the armor of light, he says to put on Jesus Christ. There is a way for us to live in this dusky moment. There is a way for us to live in this dusky moment where we stay in bed, where we try to hold on to the fleeting darkness that is going away. There is a way for us to wake up and put on the armor of light. Put on Jesus Christ. So in this season of Advent, I want you to spend a lot of time in bed, figuratively. Hopefully not 
literally. But I want you to sit there and in your spiritual self, think about what would I do if that sun was about to crest over the sky? Or what would I behave like, as Jesus says in the gospel this morning, if the Son of Man were to come at any moment? Would I act by pulling the comforter back up over my head? Or would I wake up, put on works of light, put on the person of Jesus Christ himself? Amen.